Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to be talking about how thyroid hormone affects your liver. So what we have here is a really ugly drawing of a liver. I have blood vessels here that go into the liver. This is gonna be a bile duct that's right here. And then we have thyroid hormone. So here's the first thing that thyroid hormone is going to do. Thyroid hormone is going to help with increasing the amount of glucose that is absorbed in the intestines. Okay, so here's my glucose molecules here in the intestines. They're going to come out and they're going to travel in the bloodstream up to the liver and then they're going to enter into the liver. So here's my glucose molecules right here. And now what's going to happen is the way that the body is going to store these or the way that the liver is going to store these is it's going to do it by bonding these together and forming glycogen. So I'm going to go from glucose, individual glucose to glycogen. Okay, and that's called glycogenesis. So now, between meals, I need the glucose. So what's going to happen is now we need to break this down, and this is where thyroid hormone comes in. So thyroid hormone is going to make enzymes that are going to break these bonds between the glucose molecules. And when it does, now I have this glucose, and now the glucose can enter into the bloodstream. To go from glycogen to glucose is called glycogenolysis. Okay, so that's when we go from glucose, I mean, glycogen to glucose. When we're making, when we're going from glucose to glycogen is glycogenesis. Now, you would think because now we're getting all these extra, all these extra glucose molecules in the bloodstream, we get hyper glycemia, but in actuality, the pancreas should respond and put these into cells so that way our, our, our blood sugar stays at a pretty constant rate. That's, what, that's the second thing it does, right? The first thing it's going to do is it's going to help absorb glucose from the intestines. This is the second one, it release glucose between meals. Here's another thing that's going to happen with thyroid hormone is you have cholesterol in your bloodstream. This is going to take the cholesterol out of your bloodstream. The way it does this is, let's say this is my cholesterol molecule right here. So there's my cholesterol. And what glucose is, I'm sorry, what thyroid hormone is going to do is it's going to increase the amount of receptors on my, my liver cells. Okay, so these are hepatocytes, right? That's a liver cell, a hepatocyte. And it's going to increase the basically the cholesterol receptors that are on there. Now I make it look like I'm only drawing one, but in actuality, it's gonna add many more, but this will just give you an idea, okay? Now remember, these are actually called LDL receptors, okay? Uh, low density lipoproteins, right? And so now when my cholesterol comes out, it can come and bind onto here, it's gonna go into the cell, and then it's gonna go into the bile where it's gonna be broken down, and it's actually become, gonna become a bile salt, right? So now it's gonna be in the bile, and then from there, it's going to go down into the feces, and you'll poop it out, okay? So that's the third thing that we're gonna have with thyroid, thyroid hormone, right? It's gonna increase the glucose absorption, it's gonna be responsible for glycogenolysis, so that we can get glucose out of the liver between meals, it's also gonna take cholesterol and pull it out of the bloodstream and break it down to bile so we lower cholesterol levels. The other thing that's gonna happen is, let's say we don't have enough glycogen. So what's gonna happen now? The thyroid hormone is gonna play a role in something called gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is the making of glucose from non-sugar uh, substances or non-sugar materials or non-sugar precursors, okay? So that's what gluconeogenesis is. Normally it's gonna use amino acids and it's going to use glycerol. So let's take a look at where we get these from. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I am going to draw a muscle. So here's my muscle right here. Right, there's my muscle right there. And then, okay, and then, we have amino acids. Okay, I'm gonna have my amino acids and proteins. 
So what thyroid hormone actually does is it plays a role here. My thyroid hormone is going to play a role in converting amino acids into proteins. Okay, that's an anabolic reaction, right? It's an anabolic reaction. So it's gonna, it's gonna take amino acids and turn them into proteins. The other thing it can do is it can turn the proteins into amino acids, right? And we call that catabolic reaction, right? So it can, it can be responsible for building proteins or breaking down proteins. Now, when someone has hyperthyroidism, they're gonna be breaking down more proteins than building them from the amino acids. So what's gonna happen is their muscle mass will actually decrease. But let's take a look at this here. So my amino acid now is going to come and it's going to enter into the liver. So there's my amino acids. So now we have the amino acids. So now I need to get the glycerol. So we're gonna get glycerol from triglyceride. So this is my glycerol molecule. And then what's gonna happen is I am gonna have three fatty acid tails. And these are my three fatty acid tails that are right here, one, two, three, right? That's why they call it a triglyceride. So my thyroid hormone, what it's going to do is it is going to basically play a role in breaking these fatty acid tails from this glycerol. Then what's gonna happen is the glycerol is going to enter into the liver, right? So here's my glycerol now, I'm just gonna draw it like this. There's my glycerol. And then the thyroid hormone is gonna play a role in having the glycerol meet with this amino acid right here, and it's gonna go on to make glucose. Now this glucose here, is not going to be stored because we're only doing gluconeogenesis when we don't have enough glycogen. So we're gonna make this glucose and then it's gonna enter into the bloodstream. So what's gonna happen now to these fatty acid tails? These fatty acid tails will go into the bloodstream and then what they're going to do is they're going to go to cells and then they're going to be oxidized and they're going to make ATP. So that's it for how the thyroid hormone affects the liver. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe button and we'll catch you the next time. Thanks again.